What's up everyone, it's your soul here, and it's been a while since I've made a video about Jeffrey Epstein. For those who don't know, I have made uh, quite a big map of Jeffrey Epstein's network with over 200 people on it and over 40 organisations, actually close to 300 entities on there now. So I've been studying this case for quite a long time and you know, there's some people commenting online who have been working hard to expose this, uh, such as Sean Atwood uh, and others. Uh, and I actually have done probably as much research as he seems to have done on this, so I really have put a lot of time into it, just haven't had as much time to make videos. So um, you know, please do come back and check for future updates on my site Eureka and on my blog on Steam and uh, YouTube as well, because uh, when I do put videos out on this, you'll find that I have a lot of information that just, you know, it's, it's uncommon information. So... First of all, going to start off with this story here that is commonly known about, um, which is new from the Daily Mail, where they're basically saying that photos have emerged from inside Jeffrey Epstein's New Mexico ranch, which are new images, and also there's a new whistleblower sedating that he was a contractor at the house and that he saw uh, numerous very dodgy things happening in there and for some reason didn't report that to anyone. So uh, first of all, let's just look at the pictures. So um i don't know exactly where these images came from you know i don't think they were officially released i'm not exactly sure but uh this is apparently what they call a party shower in the house which the contractor described as being for up to eight people um you know i mean i can see why he's saying that but on the other hand to be honest looking at it it just looks like a shower to me in a big room and if you're a billionaire well why wouldn't you have a big bathroom but um but anyway that's his description of it i'm not going to argue that maybe that's exactly what it was used for um and then we've got this picture of this giant cross hanging up, which is interesting to me because it's a specific one. This specific design is one that I had uh, analysed previously a long time ago when I was looking at sacred geometry and mathematics, um, and that's a whole subject to itself. I'm quite intrigued as to why he has that up there. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever find the truth of that out, but um, the claim is that this flight of stairs goes down to an underground strip club that's a thousand square feet under his house. Uh, or just outside the, the sort of um, borders of the actual main house. You know, we don't have photos of this alleged strip club, but we don't really know how true that is. The Daily Mail is talking as if it's completely true. Could well be. Um, basically saying it had, you know, uh, stripper poles, as you can see here. And the claim is that they would take VIPs, so-called, and politicians down there uh, to be uh, entertained by underage girls. No actual evidence of that, but could be true. Um, Really, this piece, you know, I'm not saying that, that it, none of this is true, because I don't know, it could very well all be true, but this piece is strangely sort of angled towards um, m making it seem that all the claims that this anonymous person has made are true when Daily Mail, well, maybe they do know, but it seems a bit strange, you know, they don't normally do that, but maybe it's because he's dead, maybe it's because he's dead, they don't really mind just uh, sensationalising it, even though it might all be true, but making these claims as if they know they're true when they don't necessarily. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, they make a point of this feature of design of this shower visible from the pool, which I suppose is a bit odd in the sense that why would you specifically want to have the shower visible from the pool? I don't know, but um, anyway. Uh, so it, it goes into some details about... Um, the layout of the house and he claims here to have seen photos uh, of Epstein with Bill Clinton surrounded by topless underage girls and sort of states that he questioned whether or not he should be working with him when he saw this um, gives various details of the uh, way the house operated and that they had uh, the main sort of managers of the house didn't live in the house and basically no one who worked there really was in the main house most of the time and it just seems to have been used for big parties a couple of times a year, is what he said. And they show all these cushions here, which they don't speculate what they're for. I don't know what they're for, but um, I guess maybe they're sort of inferring that that was something to do with an orgy, or I don't know. But um, So, yeah, I mean, mainly this is just pictures uh, from the house, but also the comments from this contractor stating these, these important um, details. Uh, so it says here, um, it's an underground layer of a thousand square feet like a nightclub with stripper poles. It's not directly underneath the house. Most activity 
uh, took place there, like dancing, hanging out. It was the entertainment area. No one, no staff was allowed down there. They installed cameras down there. He also said that the whole house was fitted with cameras, presumably for blackmail purposes, which he, and he saw a room or a cupboard which was full of the, you know, the, the sort of nerve centre for the monitoring via the cameras, which he assumed was for security, but as he says in here, he thought, now looking back on it, he thinks, you know, differently. Um, so, yeah, this is quite a big story, I would say, although without actually having public statement by the person willing to put his name to it and any evidence of the claims being made it doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot other than that possibly if it is true then the fbi and whoever else is uh i would say covering up a lot of this stuff or you know maybe it'll come to light at some point who knows uh he also claims in here that the, the ranch was named zorro ranch after uh the character zorro um being some sort of reference to uh uh, I guess you would say like sexual fetishism with the mask and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I find this quite uh, interesting. And, you know, there's various claims made that Epstein had said that he wanted to have uh, many, many children created using his DNA from many women, uh, using this ranch as a base of some kind, I think, as I understand it. And I also saw a quote from uh, Virginia Guffrey, uh, Guffrey saying, that he had apparently offered her some sort of deal where she would have a child with him. And um, yeah, so definitely lots of twists and turns to all of this. I guess if you're a billionaire with a bit of a crazy mind, then um, you can spend your days thinking of all kinds of weird things to do. <laughs> um, it's just unfortunate that he uh, chose to go down the path of complete denial of free will and respect for people and uh, and just on some strange mad ego trip instead of helping the world uh so um so this is the first part of this story now this is the least disturbing and most known about so next story this has been published in the last couple of days by this site true pundit and i thought initially this was a new story but as it turns out uh this has been uh known about for a year this this the content of this story has been actually public uh, for a year but almost no one seems to know about it if you look up true pundit online which i just did you'll see that there's a few websites saying oh it's fake news you just invent stuff it's all nonsense um but you know i don't really care who the person is that wrote this what i care about is what's said and what the evidence is for it and what he's saying here basically he's presenting a video from whistleblower um uh, well, a victim of alleged victim of sexual assault, basically as a child, um, who says he's going to go to the FBI, and at that time a year ago, and he was talking with uh, a reporter who was called Jen Moore, who actually died a couple of weeks after this um, from a seizure, and they were, were very suspicious of what caused that death. So what he actually says in here is a half an hour video. Uh, I'll link in the description so you can watch it. Uh, what he actually says is that his uncle. Uh, used to take him as a child when he was eight years old on um, kind of big ocean-going boats, or in this case it was a party on a big ocean-going boat with various VIPs, so-called, and wealthy people, etc. And they would basically have um, orgies, effectively, but w involving children, and in this case they involved him, and he said that they were doing things like they uh, they would ha they held up a child and... Um, and basically cut the base of his feet with a large sword uh, and there were various different people wandering around having big cuts down their chest and feet bleeding uh, and that was part of their weird ritual and there were other girls and children there and teenagers of different ages who were being basically abused um and you know i think he would probably be able to name quite a few people assuming this is true but one of the, the only person he actually names in there that wasn't bleeped out is bill clinton and he claims that bill clinton actually raped him um as an eight-year-old boy at this party and uh so you know, this is quite a big claim and this is not the kind of thing that you can just write off and say oh he's making it up as some people have done uh, and maybe even has been true in some cases in britain and elsewhere i mean why you would choose to deliberately kind of bring this into your life and fabricate it i have no idea but um i've watched this video i would say from what i can tell without seeing his face um i have no real reason to take from the evidence that he's lying you know obviously he could be but um 
given the other evidence against the Clinton family, in particular Bill Clinton, ranging from the epic amount of evidence relating to MENA, Arkansas, drug smuggling, um, the various CIA agents who have spoken out openly about that, um, the, the, the list of things with him is unbelievably long in terms of major crimes he's been involved with. So, yeah, you know, I'd highly suggest you check this video out and make up your own mind. And I don't exactly understand why this has just been republished. Maybe it's because of the recent evidence from Epstein has grabbed people's attention and now it's time to, you know, pay more attention to this other guy with the claims about Clinton. Being as Clinton so heavily connected with Epstein and visited Epstein's ranch so many times and assuming that even 50% of the claims about Epstein are true and if Clinton was there that many times, if someone comes forward and says they were raped as a child by Bill Clinton, then I would suggest you should take that very seriously indeed. And it's, you know, seems like it warrants full-on investigation. We've now got the so-called Prince Andrew of England um, after his interview with the BBC where he you know, basically just gave very terrible excuses for to try to cover up the claims against him as if somehow that was good enough, like saying he doesn't sweat, so therefore when she said he was sweating over in a nightclub, that couldn't be real, and things like that. I mean, even if that was true, I personally, in his position, wouldn't say that, simply because it's obvious that it makes you look like you're p clutching at straws. Um, and yeah, his whole interview was full of clutching at straws. So, uh, yeah. Um, interested to see where that goes so the next story related to all of this free thought project great website so this is relating to a guy who i'd never heard of before uh in south africa who wrote a book this one called the lost boys of bird island um and he had been researching government paedophilia again in south africa uh, he's called mark minnie uh for quite a long time and he wrote this in-depth book which i haven't read uh yet and exposing very specific politicians as being involved in uh, sexual abuse of children and so on, just the same as we're seeing around the world in America and Britain and uh, Israel and probably and Holland, you know, you name it, pretty much it seems to be most countries, amazingly. I mean, it, it just seems to be so vast, the scale of this, these networks of child abuse. It's not just like, you know, when I was younger growing up and I, when I heard about these stories, I used to just sort of think, well, I don't know anyone that does that that I know about. I've never heard anyone complain about that. So it must just be a few odd, weird people with mental problems doing this on a small scale. But as it turns out, the numbers of people involved in, in this child abuse uh, issue are amazingly high and regularly involve many, many people at the top levels of government. And, you know, that's not an accident. Um so, yeah, don't be surprised when you hear more and more governments being involved in this. Um, and in this case, this guy basically died. Uh, and again, uh, in very suspicious circumstances, the official story, so-called, from the government is that he killed himself. Uh, but he had every, literally every member of his family had said, and friends and so on had been saying, that he'd been saying to them prior to this event that he's under a great risk and threat from the people that he's exposing and he will not kill himself. He's not suicidal. If he dies, he was killed, basically. And then a few days after, you know, some of the um, people who were interviewed last saw him, he actually, and them, and him saying to them, I'm not going to kill myself, uh, you know, he was found with a revolver in his, near him and dead um, on a farm somewhere. And the story is that the gun was owned by his friend, an ex-cop. Now, you know, I don't know anything more about that. That's, I, all I really know is what's on this web page. Um, I listened to the video there uh, that's on there from his relative. And, you know, maybe it'd be good to uh, do some more research into this. But, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm just, I'm still frustrated by the number of people who bandy about the term conspiracy theorist when people highlight stories like this. Uh, and the only time they ever stop is when the mainstream media covers it. And they go, oh, it must be real then because the mainstream media are covering it because there's a government investigation. No, <laughs> just because a mainstream media source is covering something does not make it real. And just because they're not covering something does not make it not real at the end of the day. So it's just very frustrating. I'm still seeing that even today after all of this, even after all the evidence has come out or a lot of it's come out regarding Epstein. Even though most people have never even seen most of the details regarding Roy Cohn and the hundreds of people involved and all levels of government, um, 
they're still very ignorant of all that stuff. There's still people going around accusing, uh, you know, people commenting on this of being uh, conspiracy theorists. So this is one of the reasons why I combine stories like this together and keep track of them and publish information about them because there's just so much evidence out there that, you know, I'm sure that the more this gets highlighted, the more people are going to accept what's actually happening and stop ridiculing people who are taking time out of their life to actually research this to try to protect innocent people in a way that police often don't um, because unfortunately many times the police are involved in this on some level through secret societies and um, organized crime uh, which even uh, the head of the metropolitan police a few years ago wrote in a report that got leaked basically saying operation trident saying that uh, he himself and the top layers of the police couldn't trust their own people in the police because they were so infested by secret societies freemasons and criminal gangs so this is where we're at, basically. Um, the governments of the world have been uh, heavily targeted for corruption via sexual blackmail, and um, that has allowed very corrupt people to get into the top positions in governments often, and uh, who then basically employ other people in key positions in the government and judicial system who are also heavily corrupted to further the agenda of criminal gangs. So, you know, if, you, if you've if you got a defence mechanism which society's created called the judicial system, law and prison, law and order, uh, and you're somebody who wants to break laws and do uh, bad things to people and you don't want that system to stop you, then the only choice, really, other than overthrowing the entire government and abolishing the judicial system, is to infect the judicial system with your viruses and your people so that it doesn't work. And that is basically what's happened. And it's been going on for a very long time, um, certainly since before I was born, probably even for over 100 years. I mean, you know, it's, it gets a bit more difficult to prove things as you, further you go back in time. But certainly these patterns of sexual blackmail and so on in, in the position of government were going back uh, through to Roy Cohn in the sort of mid 1900s, uh, J. Edgar Hoover time, and probably before that too. So, if you haven't seen it before, please do go and check out my video uh, on the Jeffrey Epstein map, which I published, and spend some time looking through that map because there's a huge amount of information in there with sources cited tying in numerous presidents of the US, numerous Israeli prime ministers numerous members of the royal family of britain uh, many many people celebrities you name it tied in via one or two steps often or directly involved in groups that have been proven to be directly involved in child abuse and human trafficking and so on uh, the nexium cult is a key one that's in there ties into the mafia it just goes on and on and on and Basically, you're not going to hear this information coming from the mainstream media in this level of depth. It, nothing like it for a long list of reasons. So it's up to each of us to spend a bit of time and do some research into this. And even if you personally don't feel like you have much to offer in terms of researching this and helping expose what's going on, you can at least understand what's going on. And as disturbing as it is, it's better to know than not know. And, you know, maybe you're going to see the signs of this happening around you at some point, or you're going to be offered to do a business deal with somebody who you suspect to be involved in this kind of thing. And if you don't know about all of this, then you're never going to, um, you know, you're not going to make a good decision. You might end up indirectly hurting someone by helping someone else who really shouldn't be helped, something like that. Um, so it's down to all of us, really. I'd say we have an obligation. The fact that every single human being has been a child at some point means that we all know how vulnerable we are as children. And we all know that, you know, you, <laughs> the damage that can be done to a child through abuse and neglect is a huge and it absolutely is one of the most sacred areas in life, in my opinion, is to protect the innocence of children in that way and stop them from being abused. And and if the state-sponsored organisations that are meant to be doing that are heavily corrupted and, and are in some cases making the situation worse, not improving it, then the only option left is for every individual person to step up and become a real human being and actually engage the situation, do whatever you can to help. Uh, so please do, as I said, go and check out the Jeffrey Epstein video uh, and map uh, that you can find on my YouTube channel. It's also on um, my Steam blog and Eureka and other places, and I'll link it under this video. So as always, um, if you've uh, enjoyed, I mean, this isn't an enjoyable subject, but if you've got something out of this video, if you've uh, felt that this was uh, helpful and you know this information is valuable, then please do pass it on to other people, share it around uh, YouTube and other 
networks, mainstream networks, limit the amount of reach that my videos get. So people generally don't discover my videos organically on YouTube. They only really get discovered through people sharing them manually. Uh, so please do inform as many people as you can that this information exists and maybe watch it with them even. And as always, if you've enjoyed this or found it useful, then please do uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, an upvote if you're on Steam and re-Steam, re-blog and pass on. And if you're new, subscribe and hit the bell on YouTube to get full notifications. So um, again, also, if you've got any comments on this, any information I've missed, so on, then please uh, do let me know in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.